All right, so let's talk about the first of the big five, which is cost, price, rates, salaries potentially. Now, again, we're gonna look at this at first from a marketing perspective. I need you to think like a customer. And again, as we promised earlier, we can't say, but we're different. You know, one of those thoughts that you could be having right now is, so much of this, Marcus, is bid-based. Why are we even talking about cost and price? Usually, in any RFP situation, in any industry, if I go to a business, just like if I went to you and I said, if you had a choice, would you rather be the first or the last vendor contacted, or contractor contacted? Almost everybody would say, I'd rather be first, because that, that means you're at the, at the forefront of their mind. So it goes beyond just lowest price, because otherwise we wouldn't care who is first. At the same time, if I said to you, well, even though you're bid-based, does trust still matter? You'd say, well, of course it does, right? And so this conversation is extremely relevant, regardless of what type of engagement or what type of pricing you have for a particular service, product, etc. Okay, so let's analyze it together. Again, let's think like a buyer together for a minute. So when you're on a website and you're looking for cost and price information and you cannot find it, what is the emotion you experience? Yeah, frustration, right? I knew you're gonna say that because that's how we all feel. The question is why do you feel frustrated though? So you're frustrated because you're saying, I'm the buyer and I'm trying to make a decision and you're making it very difficult on me to make this decision. So in this moment of frustration, do you as the buyer, do you as the consumer, do you say to yourself, oh, I'm sure it's on this website somewhere? Do you say that? No, you don't say that, right? In fact, we've done the studies on this. Guess how long somebody will stay on your website looking for cost and price information before they leave, on average, it's like every industry around the world. 10 seconds, and it's getting shorter <laughs> by the day because we're very, very impatient. Now, in this moment of frustration, again, think like the buyer here, think like a customer, like you, you here. Do you say to yourself when you can't find that cost price information, of course they're not talking about cost and price on their website. They're a value-based business. I'm gonna call them on the phone instead. <laughs> no, you don't do that, do you? Because instead of doing that, you as the buyer, you as the searcher, you keep doing what? That's right, you keep searching, and you search until what happens, that's right, you find what you were looking for. And generally speaking, whoever gives you what you were looking for, they're gonna get what? That's right, they're gonna get your business. If not your business, at least they're gonna get first contact, first phone call. And again, the exact same rule applies to recruiting because that is a, just a different form of customer that goes through the exact same psychology. So the question is, do you talk a lot about costs, price, again, salaries on your website right now? So let's analyze why most companies don't, certainly from a marketing perspective. There's three major reasons why most companies don't like to talk about cost and price, especially when it comes to services, right? First major reason is we say, well, every job is different. We have a very customized solution, a product, a methodology. Yeah, but if I came to you and I said, can you help me understand the factors that would drive the cost of this product or service up? Could you explain that? Of course, the answer is yes. I came to you and said, could you explain the factors that would keep the cost of that product or service down? Could you explain that? You're like, yeah, of course I could do that, Marcus. If I said to you, can you help me understand why some companies are more expensive or less expensive than you? Could you explain that? You're like, yeah, I've done that before. Yeah. And so this idea of explaining why there's a range, why it depends, is extremely easy to do. In fact, it's one of the most important things we do because if we do not do it, guess what happens? We commoditize the very thing that we sell. And I'm sure you've lost a bid before because they didn't understand clearly the difference between what you were doing and what the other contractor was doing. Now, that's the first reason. Second reason why we don't like to talk about cost and price is we say things like, well, we tend to be more expensive. And if we're more expensive, we might scare them away which is ridiculous if you think about the psychology of this, because the thing that we all know actually scares us away, we talked about this just a minute ago, is not when they tell us and teach us about cost and price and again, salaries, rather it's when they don't address the thing. Because the moment they don't address it, what happens? 
That's right, they plant a seed of doubt. And when seeds of doubt exist, inertia occurs. We don't buy. We don't make decisions when we have seeds of doubt. So the whole key to trust is eliminating seeds of doubt before they have a chance to even sprout, okay? So that's the second one. Now, the third reason why we tend to say we don't want to talk about cost and price is we say these crazy things like we don't want our competitors to see it. What the what? So if I came to you and I said, do you have a pretty good sense as to what your competitors charge? You might not know exactly what they charge, but you have at least a sense. Because in every industry, if you've been in the game for any period of time, you at least have a sense as to what your competitors charge. And so if you have a good sense as to what they charge, they have a good sense as to what you charge. This is, this is a big secret, non-secret. Everybody acts like nobody knows what everybody's charging, when in reality, everybody has a pretty good sense as to what everybody is charging, or at least needs to charge in order to be profitable. Now, with that being said, again, do you talk about and teach cost and price on your website right now? So you might say, well, I don't really know, Marcus. Let me give you the example, again, of river pools. Remember, lean into the principle here. It absolutely applies to you. So when we embrace this philosophy of they ask, you answer at river pools, the first piece of content we put on our website was this one that you see on the screen right now. How much does a fiberglass pool cost? Now, believe it or not, we were the first swimming pool company in the world that was willing to address this question on our website. Nobody else was willing to address it at the time. Why? That's right, they were afraid of those same three things. Every job is different. I don't want to scare them away. I don't want my competitors to see it. But we said, you know, that's dumb because the buyer wants to know. And who do we care more about? The competitor or the buyer? The customer, the prospect, the recruit. So we said, yes, we're going to talk about it. And so we said, buying a fiberglass pool, it's a lot like buying a car. There's a lot of options. There's a lot of accessories. And we listed those options and accessories that would drive the cost up and therefore also keep the cost down. We talked about why some companies are expensive. We talked about why some companies are cheap. We talked about different packages, what an inexpensive pool package would look like and different ranges that you might expect to spend. We talked about what uh, expensive pool packages look like, you know, pools with lots of landscaping and water features and outdoor kitchens and all this stuff. And we gave, again, ranges. But we said, ultimately, the answer to your question is, it depends. But the key was, we were willing to explain why it depends. And because we were willing to explain why and at least give a range, we changed the entire industry. Certainly our business changed. And let me show you exactly how it changed. This is so very critical for you to see as a leader for your business. And so within 48 hours of publishing that piece online, if you went and searched on Google any of the phrases that you see on the screen, we were one of the first ones that you saw. Now that's just visitors. That's not revenue yet, so we haven't done anything per se, but have we? Let's look at how now marketing becomes a revenue stream. This next list that you see on the screen, it's going to get a little bit analytical, but I promise it's going to make sense. Here's a list of the number one phrases that generated the most traffic to our website over the next few years. Now let's look at the top one for a second, fiberglass pool prices. You can see there that over 13,000 people went to Google, typed in fiberglass pool prices, and of those 13,000, if you look on the right side of the screen, 30 of them filled out a form and said, I want to get a quote from you. So the number that you see on the right side of the page, those are essentially sales appointments, okay? So the red arrows that you're seeing on the screen right now indicate anyone that searched something online that landed on that article, how much does a fiberglass pool cost? So you have roughly 200 plus sales appointments that occurred from people that originally landed on that article, how much does a fiberglass pool cost? Now, here's the very important question. If that article's never written, how many of those sales appointments would have ever occurred? And of course, the answer is zero to almost none. Why? Because they wouldn't have found us. But in this case, they did find us. And because they did find us, many of them did start to read, and that trust started to elevate. And because that trust elevated, many of them did fill out a form. Many of them did have a sales appointment. Many of them did buy. We know the names of the ones that bought. We know the value of their pools, and therefore, we can track 
the value of this one single article back to all those swimming pools. And we know without equivocation that this one single article has generated over $30 million in revenue since the day it was written. $30 million that we would not have had had we not been willing to address a simple question, how much does a fiberglass pool cost? But here's the thing, did we say exactly how much it cost? No, we didn't. But we explained the factors better than anybody ever had in the space. Here's the thing, folks. If you don't explain all the factors that go into, let's say, a job, I'll just call it. Because again, I don't know your space like you know your space, but I do know equipment, and I do know work, and I do know jobs, and I do know pricing, and I do know how buyers think. And if we're willing to do that, we can now start to build value. You see, talking about something isn't what commoditizes. What commoditizes is when we allow ignorance to exist in the marketplace, when people don't know. And because they don't know the difference between one proposal versus the other proposal, and they think it's the same thing, what do they do? They go with the lowest bid. That's how it always works. But when they definitively understand the difference, because they can see the value proposition, now all of a sudden we're cooking with gas. Now all of a sudden they're saying, yeah, it's maybe 5% more, 10% more, 15% more, but here's what they're doing that nobody else is willing to do. Education decommoditizes products and services, but it only happens if we're the ones willing to be the educators. The exact same thing can be applied to when it comes to recruiting. We've got to be willing to talk about this so that people understand what folks get paid in this industry. What drives salaries or compensation up? What are the factors that keep it down? Why do you get paid more in some areas or in some jobs or in some positions or in some locations, whereas not as much in others? Not everybody naturally understands this and we can't assume that they do. When we stop assuming and start treating them as informed human beings, that are just trying to understand, everything can start to change. So that's my challenge to you. Start to talk about cost and price. And in this next video, we're gonna talk about the details of specifically how to talk more about cost.